Hey guys, it's me, Eric Newman. So the amount of technology in the VR, AR space is definitely proliferating. I actually recently had a request to do a short video where I try and explain all of the different kinds of tracking systems that all of the different kind of hardware uses. So I'm gonna give that a shot, and I'm also gonna give these to you in order of my preference. So let's start way over down here. This is the Google Daydream. Daydream is basically just a soft, plush kind of a headset, a Google Cardboard headset and a phone goes right in here. So this is what's called a 3DOF, 3 Degrees of Freedom headset, and its tracking comes exclusively from accelerometers inside of your phone. The only thing that it knows is, oh, I moved from there to there. Oh, I felt a swing in this direction or this direction. So because of that, that headset only allows you to look side to side, up and down. Now next up is the Oculus, and a lot of people love this headset, so I'm not gonna talk too much smack about it, um, but it's not my favorite headset. So the Oculus actually uses an optical tracking paradigm where inside this plastic, there are infrared LEDs. And each of the tracking towers for an Oculus is actually a camera that is recording the motion of those things and determining the position of the headset by uh, basically knowing the size and shape of the headset itself. So it can obviously tell how far away something is because there's these dots all the way around it. I don't love this paradigm because your cameras actually have to be pretty high quality, which means they're expensive, which means that it doesn't scale. You also end up having to push a, a lot of data through the pipe um, from each camera, an entire actual image, which again means it doesn't scale that well. Now Oculus has had some success in, uh, in bringing the quality of that up, and that's good, but I still am not as big a fan of it as I am of the Vive. So the Vive is sort of like my first true love of virtual reality. Um, you can see I have one right here. And uh, the Vive actually works using a laser-based tower tracking system. So there are these towers that are called the lighthouses, and they're these little boxes. Uh, and basically what the lighthouse box does is it beams out a laser that has a time code baked into it. In the pulses of the laser, uh, the, the actual very, very, very precise timestamp of when that pulse was sent is included. And so what you have is basically a very simple form of triangulation. Uh, you have two towers, you have one headset or one controller or two controllers, and each of these little dimples on the controllers or the trackers or the headsets, they're actually sensors. And the shapes are very, calcul very carefully calculated so that no matter how I hold this thing, Almost any way I hold it, there's gonna be a direct line of sight between two points on this controller and either of the lighthouse towers. So this is also really, really awesome. This is the most precise tracking system on the market, I'm pretty sure. Um, and so top marks go to this for quality of experience. But of course, it's kind of expensive and you have to set it up, it has to stay calibrated. You need an entire room dedicated just to have that set up. Now, what I don't have here it's a PSVR, but I'm gonna try and explain it to you guys anyway. So the PSVR uh, is sort of similar to the Oculus in that it has lights on the outside of the headset, but they aren't infrared, they're purely vis visible spectrum light. Um, and then the PSVR just has a big old honking camera, maybe it's two cameras, uh, that again, do the same kind of corner tracking. Now also, each of the PSVR controllers has a colored ball on top of it. And what you'll notice about those colored balls is that they're self-lit. They're illuminated from the inside, generally one pink and one blue. And so what this means is that this sphere, obviously the sphere looks the same from any side, um, but the, uh, the actual PSVR, the PlayStation, can always tell how far away these things are in any kind of light, because they're always gonna be essentially the same color, whether it's the middle of the day or the middle of the night. Now this brings me to my favorite new system which is the Windows Mixed Reality system. I think this is the direction that uh, all of our VR is gonna be going. And so the way that this guy works is, it's got two cameras on the front, and it's got these visible light LEDs on the CAN controller. And these cameras are what's called SLAM cameras. And so I have another video that I'll try and link below that explains how SLAM works. But in short, uh, SLAM basically tracks the fixed objects in your environment. So the corners, uh, the edges, any kind of object that's stationary. Um, the SLAM system basically is running forced perspective. If you have any kind of art background, or if you remember in school, making those line drawings where you can have the roads going off into the distance, basically running that backwards, running perspective-based mathematics to determine the position of the headset within the space. 
Now right now, the hand controllers are a little bit limited because the field of view of the cameras themselves is only about 180, 190 degrees, so you can't put your controller behind you. I actually think that um, this system is going to grow really, really well. Uh, you're probably going to see that controllers in the not too distant future are going to have SLAM cams on them as well uh, as we start to have dedicated SLAM processing hardware. The nice thing about the Windows Mixed Reality headsets is that, number one, they're very cheap. They're very lightweight. They're comfortable. There's no setup. You can roll with this in your backpack and just go anywhere you want. And uh, they work pretty well. Not quite as well as the Vive, so I'd still recommend that if you're going to be doing heavy gaming or you're like, I don't know, working on a surgery system. Um, but for most normal consumers, I think this is good and it's going to get better. Hope that was fast enough. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions, comments, anything, put it below. And of, of course, as always, if you enjoyed this at all, like and subscribe. You can find me on YouTube, where actually I'm going to be putting more and more of my videos out. Uh, just search for Eric Newman on YouTube and I'll see you guys there. Till next time, catch you later.